Unfortunately, single-digit kills from Burns and March probably didn't help the situation. However, when you are playing against uh, Moose and Marky B's AR, it must be a very tough mountain to climb. But now we are going to go on to Search and Destroy on C-Town. Yeah, Search and Destroy on C-Town. But because we are on main stage, we will be keeping a little bit off the play-by-play -play just to make sure we don't let the players in on what is actually going on. But just about... Basically, when you go on main stage, they can hear what we're saying. So we're sorry about that if we don't do as much play by play as we'd usually like to. But just to make sure that the tournament is completely fair. Yeah, it is um, quite hard for them to actually hear. But if at any point there is a lull in sound in their game volume, uh, we are blasting out on the speakers. So we just like to be a little bit more cautious. It is hard for them to hear. Of course, they do have their headsets on absolute full whack. I mean, I've played at a LAN before and you know that you need it that high I mean especially yeah. when in the event as well they do play music just to pump up the atmosphere but you just need to block that out but of course the expensive headsets that they do usually don do do that perfectly we are just seeing large crowds in the actual venue there see I, I am really a fan of this high quality production stream where we've got the camera overview that is controlled by a remote control sensor yeah, you know, it gets to show just how great this event really is. I mean, everyone I've spoken to today is really impressed with just how many people are here. And it's, it's incredible just how EGL has grown recently. But I'm so looking forward to it. And you know what? We're going to talk a little bit about the teams right now. Four Kings, obviously, this is a completely different Four Kings lineup than we have seen previously. Momo being the only player that stayed. Yeah, one out of four. You know what? They were kind of underrated, but as they've got on that EGL grind, as you spoke about earlier, people will be like, you know what? This is a solid team, and they come to land, they've come to do the business and in preparation for Black Ops 2. I mean, when they were first picked up or Momo started forming the team, I mean, he's had a lot of support from the management. He's always very grateful from that. But a lot of people, myself included, perhaps doubted this squadron a little bit, thinking it wasn't up to the standards that we saw at the last event. Um, I mean... Teaming with McGee, um, Pasco, and Jurd was a solid roster. They did come third at that actual EGL, which, to be honest, everybody was taken a little bit by surprise of and didn't think that Momo and this squad could replicate. However, on this grind that they have been putting in the time, it has gone very well for them. They've been beating some of the top, top EU teams online, so it's just whether we can see that replicated in the actual um, yeah, event they need, here. They need to bring that A game to this land and just sort of prove that it isn't all online, obviously, as it is quite a different game on land. But there you go, Momo picking up Tech Henke. And we're actually on board with Tech's fine right now as he is uh, checking out this area, as you can see on the stream. Uh, you know what? It's interesting to see how they play this usually. Yeah, I mean, you often find that all players... Well, you'll often find that three players normally push one bomb site, another will watch the flank. However, it's interesting to see how Tech have actually played this. It isn't necessarily the, uh, the general rule of thumb. If I just bring up that start menu there. Is there only two players left alive? No, you have actually seen there is uh, one back there, obviously. Like I said, we are trying very, very hard not to give away anything to these players. We don't want to ruin a search and destroy at this level of tournament. But you know what? I'm quite interested to see how this Tech Sweden do. Like I said, I watched them EGL6. They came third. They've stepped up now to this big scene. It's a very, very high caliber tournament. There are a lot of teams here, and they want to do the business and want to prove themselves among the top teams in Europe. Yeah, Momo there getting taken down by Burns, who was momentarily in a one versus four situation, now left in a one versus three. He has got all the necessary equipment to actually complete this round, but with only 42 seconds left on that clock, is it going to be doable for him? Only time will tell as he moves up that map. You know what, this is an incredibly difficult situation for any player and actually gets shut down there. But you know what, when you are 3v1 or you are in a clutch like that, and the bomb, you know, the time was going away as well, so you've got to try and make a kill, keep away and put the bomb down. And you know what, it's almost impossible, especially against good players who have the patience and the gun skill to just stay where they are and go, you know what, come to us and we're going to take you down. Yeah, very impressive start there. I mean, I did actually have a chat with Momo yesterday about his s and I mean... In previous tournaments, he hasn't exactly played the greatest that he could have done in a search and destroy. But lately, in this grind that we speak of, he's felt a lot more stronger. And with this team, they've been able to replicate setups of some of the top EU teams. I feel that I'm not really giving the total esports circuit squadron enough airtime or being spoken about, if I'm honest. But all oh, Burns there with a nice shot onto Momo, taking him unaware. Marky B managing to clean up that mess, but now Svan in a very interesting position to exchange kills yeah you know what we're talking about total esports circuit and uh 
they just they do seem like a good team, but are they top quality level? This is what they've come here to find out. EDL6 wasn't the biggest land in, in competitive terms, not what we're used to. But there's enough teams here, there are teams from all over the world. You've got four American teams who have turned up to come and do the business as well. So this is the main stage, this is everything. They need to prove themselves now because obviously it's going into off season. Yeah, of course, this is the final Modern Warfare 3 event. This will be the very last major UK land anyway that we do see sporting this game in their tournament lineup. Of course, it will be Black Ops, the next LAN event that we will see in the United Kingdom. Oh, so boy. now Svan left to defuse this bomb. He is joined. Oh, he has got a teammate. Did see one around the back of that fountain. Has managed to take down Marky e. Beast. And now Kyle, one versus two. Kyle's taken oh, down Marks and completed that wow. 1v2 with the kill on Svan over that head glitch of the bomb as well. The Four Kings are very, very vocal here at LAN. That is one of the beauties of the tournament, in my opinion. The, the fact that the players are able to sort of shout at each other, the, the in-game banter, the, it, I think it really helps motivate a team. You know what, that was actually an incredible two-piece we just saw there. The shots he got on over long range with the PP90, actually incredible. So I couldn't playing switch the top over. Of the game. Yeah, I couldn't switch over in time to actually uh, get on board with them, see how that was going. But now, on board with Momo as we go on to the four Kings team, see how they can uh, continue their impressive winning ways. Momo landing two stuns over there, but has actually been taken down by Marks. Three versus three, and now two versus three in favour of Tech. Yeah, here we go, on board. You know what, it's kind of interesting to see how these top teams develop their S&D strategies. They find new spots, they try and figure out choke points, they try and work this in their advantage. And you know what, it's kind of always the same on every map. A's slightly forward, more forward, or B slightly more forward. Which one are you going to go for? Are you going for an all-team push? You're going to spread out across the map, you're going to try and get a few kills and move up. And you know what, various teams do it very, very differently. Some teams are just all out aggression. They'll go for it, they'll send the flanker through. But you know what, we also see teams that are complete opposite of that. They sit in corners, they watch the head glitches, wait for a couple of kills and then they can lock it down. Yeah, we are seeing Kyle, one versus two, but being taken down by Spa now. I momentarily took off my ear cup of one of my headset um, and was listening to the, the Swedish team and they're talking so fast. I mean, I obviously can't understand the word of it, but different languages all coming together in one place, all with the common interest of gaming. Modern Warfare 3 is simply beautiful, Brycey. Well, I have to agree with that, actually, Gucci. It is really good to see the teams here. I know there's an awful lot of fans here as well that have turned out just to see these teams come in. So, you know what, there's something here for everyone from every nationality. Yeah, the queues outside this morning were absolutely insane. I mean, fortunately, we've got staff bands, so we managed to queue jump. I always feel a little bit sorry for the people outside queuing. Uh, because you just walk straight past them. They've been there for a couple of hours sometimes queuing and then we're just walking straight past them, straight in the door. But the I amount of people actually outside queuing was actually I, I didn't feel sorry. You didn't feel sorry. I went and said hello. You I was nice. Was I, went, I went and spoke to them. I went and spoke to a lot of people outside today, uh, just talking about esports in general, speaking to the public. And that you know what? A few people were kind of interested to see how competitive COD goes down. They're like, you know what? I've heard it's here. Oh, we'll come see what it's all about and so we're going to see if we get some new fans from this it's going to be a lot of exposure for esports and Call of Duty in general yeah I mean we have got uh, the whole of the expo um, exhibition on as well so there have been a lot of people come, come around to spectate that and um, a lot of them have ventured over to the tournament area seeing what's going on I mean we've got Call of Duty we've got FIFA we've got Halo and I believe Street Fighter is here as well under the EGL 8 banner so a lot of different games for people to actually watch if they are re even remotely interested in even if it just gains a couple more fans that's a couple more fans we didn't have before that will now be tuned into the streams and help the game grow in general i mean black ops 2 is going to be huge but now momo just got that bomb down marky b oh, wow. picking up that kill and that is now three one to four kings here on this search and destroy game you know what, this is a hype team. This Four Kings, they are riled up every single time. They're all congratulating each other. They're shouting, they're giving it their all. They are hyped and they are passionate and they're going to try and take it to this tech suite. And they are now 3-1 up on this search and destroy. They get another round. They're going to go two maps up here. It's going to be incredible to see. Like I said, they are hyped. They want to go against the best in Europe. They, this, I think this team feels like it needs to prove itself. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like I said earlier, they came under a lot of speculation as to whether they'd be good enough and up to previous standards of the Four Kings lineup and up there with the uh, the rest of the top teams in Europe. But now we are on board with fan favourite Henke as they are attempting to stay in the search and destroy game, advancing through with an MP7. 
ever so good at close range, but also has that long range advantage as well. Sometimes being referred to as a sniper rifle when hit in the head. But Henke there sees Marky oh, B almost managing no. to take him down, but Marky B's ACR shot was too strong for him. So that does leave Tech on the wrong side of a 3v4 player disadvantage. You know what? I'm not sure that was actually a great choice there. He just seemed to uh, jump in and challenge an ACR on a head glitch. Not something you really want to do, especially when the ACR knows you're coming. Obviously, he went for a little bit of luck, and there you go. Tech Burns actually picking up Carly 4K. Kills going off all over the map here. There needs to be some sort of semblance of structure now. And Tech, you know, Tech Burns, he's got to try and do something. And time is still ticking away. He needs to figure out his game plan and go for it. Yeah, previously in a one versus three situation, now left one versus two against Momo and Moose. Momo having a really good game here with six kills in just four rounds. So now, how can Burns play this? He's got two players left to take out. He is on the attack and with one minute eight left on that clock, circulating, checking the popular areas that the four Kings lads might actually be in as he advances through the map. Of course, he has only got less than one minute now. Is on the attack. What can he do? You know what, the danger here is that he's going to have to pick a bomb site, and then when he picks a bomb site, he's going to have to clear it out. So he's going to get in a gun battle and allow that other teammate to try and flank him or get killed. Oh, he's go. He has engaged and gets shut down by Moose. There we go. 4-1 to 4 Kings. They've gone 2-0 up in maps right now. 